Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are joining us. And um, oh, hi, Duan. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this discussion on developing um, and maintaining competencies needed for workplace success. I would like to thank you for taking time out of your busy lives and coming to participate in our workshop. So I would like to have a couple minutes uh, for the people to join in. I see the numbers are going up and great to see you. Feel free to chat. Um, I will be recording this presentation and I'll be happy to share the link to the video recording and also uh, presentation slides with you so that you could either review it at a later time or you can share it with your colleagues. So as the number of registrations or participants keeps going up, um, I wanted to uh, share with you a couple housekeeping items and I'll go over them again as we start the presentation so that you'll have ample opportunities to participate in this workshop. And it is career development, a look at the competencies needed to succeed for your learners, for your graduates, and even for your uh, staff or faculty members. So uh, my name is Alima Jemian Soren, and I'm running this webinar today out of my office in Tokyo, Japan. I'm the director of Asia Pacific Operations here at Peregrine Global Services, and I actually cover Asia, Central East Asia, Asia Pacific, including India as well. And today's webinar is brought to you by Peregrine and Association of MBAs out of London. Peregrine works in close cooperation with AMBA to help provide member schools with resources and services to enhance quality assurance in business schools around the world. If you wanted to get in touch with me, here's my email address, jemiansoren at peregrineglobal.com. So there are multiple ways uh, to participate in this workshop and do, and I do hope it to uh, make it somewhat interactive. Um, we are doing webinars, so it's kind of weird that I'm doing one way uh, interaction with you, but going forward, if we wanted to have a smaller, more interactive uh, meeting set up in Zoom, I'd be more than happy to schedule it for you. But in today's webinar, because we have a great number of registrants and attendees uh, who, are, who signed up, um, we have made it into webinar and there are multiple ways to participate. When I launch uh, poll questions, please answer them and I will be sharing the results with you. And then you can also ask your questions in the question pane or the chat box, just like Duan did. And then uh, I will plan to leave a good 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A. So if you have a question you want to ask, you can raise your hand, you can type your question, or uh, feel free to uh, wait until the end so that you gather all the information that I'm here to present to you, which has plenty of good stuff today. And then, um, you know, you're welcome to contact me at any time with your questions, and I'd be more than happy to set up a call or a virtual meeting or hold any workshops for your team. Uh, in terms of today's uh, presentation, um, I will be covering uh, several areas related to career development, right? Several areas related to developing and uh, maintaining workplace readiness skills and competencies. What are the challenges? What are the benefits? And what are the solutions, right? And I'll also discuss um, along with best practices and solutions, um, how to assess outcomes, right? How to set goals related to professional uh, skill development and demonstrate the attainment of professional competencies in our learners and graduates. So then uh, what do we mean by professional skills, right? Professional skills are a combination of people skills social skills, communication skills, and character or personality traits that enable you to navigate your environment and work well with others. These professional skills are career competencies that often are not taught or acquired as part of a student's academic coursework. And many uh, professional skills are characteristics of a servant leadership, including listening, empathy, 
awareness, persuasion, stewardship, and building community. These have been shown uh, to highly effective, to be highly effective in fostering the development and well-being of colleagues and achieving long-term organizational goals. So we often talk about uh, skill sets, right, which include several skills that one uh, might possess. Here are some examples of the classic terms soft and hard skills. We know that mo most jobs require a combination of a, uh, or a hybrid skills, for example, a customer service, right? And these terms are not always the most appropriate and may best uh, be referred to as a transferable skills. So as we know, different skill sets are necessary for different professions. And here's a list of uh, you know, particular skills that go under soft skills or hard skills or also hybrid skills. Now, um, uh, there is a, a Fortune 500 CEO study that revealed that 75% of person's long-term success depends on their interpersonal skills. And only 25% depends on technical knowledge. So people are hired because they tend to fit in with the culture and way an organization wants to work together. Most interviews today focus on professional skills rather than spending time asking detailed questions about technical skills. Now the basic technical skills shown on a resume often get you the interview, but it is who you are as a person that determines your success in an organization. So in the past, uh, workers were hired and promoted based primarily on their technical or functional skills. Organizations are now placing greater emphasis on less tangible qualities such as communication skills, right? Teamwork, positive attitude, and leadership. Uh, research has also shown that interpersonal or professional skills are more accurate predictors of success than conventional intelligence levels and hard skill levels alone. Now on this slide, we see that top skills employers are looking for new graduates entering the workforce. This is a 2019 uh, report uh, from the Society of Human Resource uh, Management out of the US. And in this study, the human resource professionals indicated which skills were most often missing in new hires. And I'm sure you can just guess it yourselves that problem solving, communication, critical thinking, innovation, and creativity, and the ability to deal with complexity and ambiguity made the top list. There's also a 2019 a study published in the International Journal of Business Communication, uh, which found that leaders who use communication to foster psychological connections between supervisors and subordinates promote more positive intrinsic work uh, dispositions among employees. So including higher innovation, right? Motivation, lower burnout and higher job satisfaction. So now NACI is the National Association of Colleges and Employers. This is an organization that forms a bridge between higher education institutions and human resource professionals. Through an interactive process involving both higher education and uh, human resource uh, recruiting staff at more than 600 uh, uh, companies and organizations, NACI has identified eight competencies that represent what career service professionals should be helping their students achieve and what employers are broadly looking for in their ideal candidates. Now we do have uh, leading edge learning modules and I'll uh, introduce that to you shortly, which covers a broad range of topics under the following categories, uh, which can be resources for higher education to further develop their students' professional skills. And these map uh, very well to the NACI's eight competencies as shown on this slide. So you can see that critical thinking and problem solving, right? Oral and written communications, teamwork, collaboration, uh, proficiency in technical, in the use of digital technology, leadership, 
uh, professionalism and uh, work ethic, along with uh, career management and global intercultural fluency are those eight competencies uh, that NACI has identified uh, lacking in recent graduates. So here, I'd like to launch a poll question. I said this is an interactive uh, workshop. So please uh, answer one of these uh, questions. So in your current situation, uh, what are your needs? Do you need to develop a career readiness program for your students? So this, will, this is professionalism, career management, and getting your students ready out for workforce. Uh, the second response is, um, do you need professional development program for your faculty or for your staff development, right? And then uh, if you need uh, to uh, identify and create uh, learning outcomes for career readiness related skills in your programs, that's option number three. And if you need to meet your accreditors requirements related to professional competencies of graduates, how do you need to put an assessment plan together, right? How do you need to assess? How do you need to use the results for your continuous improvement processes? That would be uh, the option number four in this polling. So I'd like to see, um, so I see the responses are coming in. As uh, the responses come in, I see that um, 67% of you are currently 70% saying that you do need to develop learning outcomes related to professional skills of your learners. So that's a pretty good number there. Uh, the next comes in as uh, you do need to develop uh, career readiness programs for your learners, for your students. So this is the right place for you to come. And then uh, the next comes half and half, uh, you need to develop a professional development program for your staff. And then you also need to meet uh, uh, your potentially programmatic or institutional accreditors requirements uh, related to professional competencies of your graduates. So I see the results are coming in. Thank you for responding. And I would like to end the polling here now. Okay, so I can share results. Um, I hope you're able to see the results and uh, I'm stopping. So 60% still tops that you do need to learn uh, to formulate or define your learning outcomes as they relate to professional skills and competencies. All right, so well, let's start uh, with a lighthearted cartoon, right? Um, it looks like a potential employee appears to be talking to a hiring manager. And uh, he says, yes, I think I have good people skills. What kind of idiot question is that, <laughs> right? Well, that was that. But in all seriousness, uh, there is some truth in the idea that a person's interpersonal competency and professional skills can be a determining factor in getting a job. They most certainly can be the cause of losing one. So then in the following section, uh, let's look at the importance of professional skills and building strong relationships that embrace diversity, uh, promote collaboration, and help learners become more career ready to be successful and pursue innovation in a rapidly changing world. So the, question, the, so the question is, how do we develop these skills and competencies, right? And our learners, and how do we turn our graduates into valued employees? I'm also just so you know, I'm monitoring the chat and the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand to stop me or type your questions into your chat. So let's discuss some of the top skills that employers look for in new hires and, uh, and have the greatest impact on workplace success. So as you would have guessed, of course, it's communication, uh, critical thinking, leadership, and teamwork. You will find these professional skills listed in intended, intended learning outcomes across institutions but assessing student achievement in these areas can be difficult, right? 
uh, later on in, uh, in my presentation, uh, I will bring uh, to you information as to how to quantify something so intangible, right? And how to measure, how to use the results of that assessment into improving your particular programs. But for now, let's uh, take a look at each of these skills um, and what do they mean to young professionals? So communication, right? How well do you communicate? Employers value employees who can not only communicate their own ideas, but who also can listen empathetically, empathetically to others, right? With empathy. Communication has a subset of soft skills that include verbal and nonverbal communication. Does your nonverbal communication match what you are saying? Can you read others' nonverbal communication cues to ensure understanding? Now, listening, as you all know, is only 50% of the communication process. However, when engaged in a communication, uh, many of us are busy thinking of our response that will not end up truly listening, right? So conveying to another person that you are truly listening to them can diffuse a tense situation and make them feel valued. In terms of uh, negotiation and persuasion, with the peace, uh, with the with the you know, we can really accomplish a lot when you have um, you know honed these skills. So this provides you with an ability to really change the world, uh, communicate a change, vision, or new direction, and get people on board um, uh, when uh, at your workplace you have major uh, benefits to achieve from um, being able to negotiate and persuade others better. Now, approaching conversations with greater inquiry and advocacy can help a person um, find win-win solutions, right? So, and then as many of us are engaged and uh, getting very well, I'm sure, skilled, uh, presentation and writing is essential to um, many of our jobs and success at workplace. So these may seem like more like hard skills, but using your ability to read your audience and incorporate emotional intelligence into your presentations and business correspondence will increase respect and, strength and strengthen a relationship building. So no matter what the job is, um, critical thinking uh, has always been in big demand and still is. And employers uh, certainly want candidates who can analyze situations and make informed decisions. Critical thinkers use their abilities uh, to be adaptable, creative, and innovative, right? So they approach problem solving in collaborative ways and use their willingness to learn to make the right decisions. Now, critical thinking involves uh, systems thinking, looking at the entire system that is producing the observed outcome and uh, not jumping to conclusions or solutions before having all the facts. Now, critical thinking depends on communication and gathering data and input from multiple sources to analyze the root causes of various problems. And then another area is, of course, uh, we think, um, or a lot of people think that leaders are only those who are um, higher up in the organization right? They have a title of a manager or supervisor or director, but leadership can be found in every position within an organization. The ability to step up to the plate in a difficult situation and make sense of it for others and to help to resolve a problem is a valued asset in today's working environment. I'm sure that we have uh, all had a person in our personal or professional lives who we have seen as that go-to person, right? Who may, may not have a, you know, a formal title, but uh, these are the people that can uh, provide us with insight and guide us to the next level of uh, uh, decision-making. So there are a whole a host of soft skills that fall under the definition of leadership. And then here are just some of the examples um, uh, of what great leaders exhibit is they show competence in uh, conflict and conflict management and resolution management, right? Keeping a cool head during conflict and working with others towards a win-win situation. They're able to um, 
be thoughtful decision makers and deliver decisions in a timely manner. And also an ability to delegate and empower others is an, another great uh, characteristic. Also providing uh, clear and helpful feedback to others, especially when they are needed. Another uh, attribute of a great leader is uh, an ability to inspire others by communicating the common purpose, the common vision. Um, mentoring is uh, a very big part of uh, being able to help others to grow personally and within the organization, right? And then just to, you know, uh, part of project management that you'll be able to work with others and meet deadlines. And then um, again, you know, being able to supervise others in a way that is not suffocating or micromanaging, right? Empowering others, understanding that different people and different situations require a leader to be flexible in their leadership style and approach. And then especially in this day and age, um, Teamwork is something that is quite often makes the top of the list of uh, the workplace uh, readiness skills that our graduates are lacking in this day and age, right? So whether no, an employee participates in a lot of team projects or simply attends a few departmental meetings, they need to be able to work effectively with the people around them, right? This includes uh, being able to work with others even when you do not always see eye to eye. And skills related to uh, teamwork uh, include um, the ability to accept feedback, you know, and uh, collaborate with others uh, with a mission in mind, recognize and appreciate diversity in a team. And that diversity could come in the form of age and gender and experience and background. So there's great uh, value and uh, diversity in diversity itself. And then be able to regulate your emotions and read uh, the emotions of others in order to build relationships that will generate productivity in a team. So in short, uh, professional skills and soft skills can be best developed through experiential learning, where the learner takes an active role by taking a concept, an idea or technique, and putting it into practice right? Learning from failures and building upon successes. And as we all know, most often we learn more from our failures than from our successes, right? So here's a list of activities that um, are excellent at building career readiness skills. So you can see there are some group projects, uh, including competitions, conflict resolution, role playing, peer feedback, simulations, and, uh, and many of you have internships. And internships are a valuable way to put into practice the learning uh, we have acquired. It is a great place uh, to test things out and see how it works. At the end of an internship, having a 360 evaluation, uh, particularly focused on those professional soft skills, right, can be a great advantage to the student. And by seeing themselves through the eyes of the others, uh, students can learn to make adjustments or learn um, new skills they may not have thought important uh, prior to their internship experience. So here's an example of a problem-centered uh, learning from a course uh, my colleague Christina has completed for her graduate program. So this was a, a competition for a $5 million grant and class was divided into groups of four to five people. And this kind of resembled uh, real life uh, remote work teams, right? And they had to schedule meetings. Uh, they had to use their negotiation and persuasion skills to choose a, pro a project that was closest to their heart and uh, delegate uh, various tasks, including research tasks. And finally deliver presentation to the entire class and the class voted on the winning proposal. So peer evaluation in this case was used to assess um, uh, not only the individual students, but also the teammates' performances. And much like a performance appraisal at work, right? By using this problem-based or problem-centered learning in a very uh, you know, realistic lifelike scenario, uh, the students learned not only strategic planning and financial analysis, but also how to work together and to bring a project to life. And uh, so there's a lot of great learning that happened uh, in the process of uh, uh, conducting this project. So here, I would like to uh, ask you our next question. I don't see any hands raised yet. So um, again, feel free to type your questions 
and to uh, raise your hand if you have any questions or if you need clarification or more information. So the second poll question I have for you is, uh, uh, which of the following skills do you feel you need to improve in developing in your students? So number one is communication. And I see a lot of communication coming in, critical thinking, leadership, and teamwork. So with the communication, as I've just mentioned, uh, we are talking about not, not only written communication, which sometimes uh, we teach our students pretty well, especially if you have, um, you know, big component of written assignments, right? And a big component of uh, uh, your classroom time devoted to how to conduct research, how to formulate thesis ideas and how to do research and how to summarize the results, how to support your ideas with examples and then write up conclusions. So, but most often the oral communication part, right? Ability to present, ability to synthesize the information, think on your feet, uh, seem to be lacking. And then as I see the results coming in, 75% um, of you are saying that uh, you do need to develop your learners' uh, communication skills. And a critical thinking and teamwork come next. And then um, uh, leadership comes at nearly 25%. So let me share the results. So definitely communication is a uh, point of your uh, current needs and interests. So, um, and that's very typical of uh, many higher educational programs and institutions. Well, thank you for responding to that poll. So here's a list of additional examples and best practices on how schools are becoming more innovative in the ways they develop, enhance, and assess the workplace readiness skills. And um, as you can see, one of the examples I can mention, and, and actually one of my partner institutions in the US, they do it quite well. They have an accounting program and the accounting students, they go out into the community. And this is a tax season for individual citizens, also for the corporations. So they go and help with the tax uh, prep work for the community. And that's a really great hands-on experiential learning that students at that uh, MBA program get to uh, not only experience, but also deliver to the community. And uh, here's a great list. So I'll be happy to share, as I mentioned, uh, this presentation with you. So now, next, I wanted to share with you some of the solutions we offer. Uh, in this case, uh, they come in the form of uh, leading edge learning online courses and modules. Uh, it's a content that en engages your learners anytime and anywhere. So these are, um, so what is uh, leading edge learning, right? These are modules developed by Peregrine uh, to provide support for developing uh, these workplace readiness skills and competencies in eight different areas. So as you can see, they map very well with the survey results, with the study reports results, and uh, they concern uh, the critical thinking and problem solving, oral and written communication, which topped our survey uh, questionnaire today, teamwork, collaboration, career management, leadership, professionalism, global intercultural fluency, and digital technology. So currently we have made available uh, via the AMBA website a selection of modules we believe will help you to enhance and develop the professional skills and competencies of your learners or programs. And uh, this set of modules cover workplace skills uh, related to conflict, uh, emotional intelligence, hiring, speaking, and writing. So if you have a leadership development course or program or a center, these modules are great resources to enrich them. So this is one way to deliver content and knowledge on these uh, professional skills to your students and do it in an environment that is uh, you know, pretty interactive. And uh, as I was saying, what to expect from these modules. Now there's a variety of tools used uh, to make learning in these modules engaging. And they offer a nice feature about it is a self-paced uh, approach to learning. So these are interactive uh, modules and then they use uh, multimedia content as I mentioned. And um, you know, we all know some days we have more time, right? 
and on others we have less. So when you actually sign up to take this course, uh, if it's too constraining with regard to place and time, um, and this uh, you know online self-paced uh, module approach is quite ideal. And um, you can uh, navigate around the module and complete and return to sections. And you can use this module as a valuable resource for up to two years. So often uh, when you are done with a typical online course or program, you do not have uh, continuous access to that course. So this will be a resource for you to use uh, as you go on to, as your learners go on to internships or as uh, uh, you are an instructor using it and uh, you can provide it as a resource to your graduates as well. So all of these modules are organized into logical sections with reviews and quizzes and a variety of activities that help reinforce um, the learning process. So the modules are um, uh, very uh, in terms of sizes and topics. And uh, I will be happy to provide you with information as to uh, what kinds of uh, coverage we provide to you. So you can identify those that are most suitable to your particular needs. needs. And uh, as I mentioned, these are pretty flexible and practical solutions to developing the knowledge and understanding of professional skills and competencies. So if you have any questions, let's see. Um, I'm kind of touching lightly on the leading edge learning modules. And this is a really robust and really um, you know, wide ranging uh, topical coverage tool that is plug and use, right? This is here to help you to enhance your program, your course, your offerings, or to add some variety, to add some uh, multimedia experience and more engaging content to what you are currently might be using. So it's essentially here to make your life easier. So next, I'd like to shift uh, to the continuous uh, improvement process as part of um, you know, assessing the outcome, setting targets, and demonstrating the attainment of these competencies by your learners. So we have discussed the importance of soft skills, right, and the workplace and some ways to develop them. And uh, we have talked about the benefits and the challenges. So let's talk about making uh, these soft skills part of your assessment plan for continuous improvement. So I have a next, uh, a quick poll question. And the question is, uh, do you currently assess career readiness skills, including soft skills? And um, it's just yes or no. And I'm curious to see how uh, many of you are able to assess it in some form. Uh, how many of you uh, might be uh, having a bit more of a challenge in terms of uh, identifying and uh, um, being able to measure something that is quite so intangible, right? So that's this is a very good response. I see 60% of you uh, say you do have uh, uh, some kind of assessment plan that helps you to measure these career readiness um, skills and the numbers going higher. And um, let's see, well, thank you for responding to this um, questionnaire. And um, so for the uh, sake of saving time, let me close the poll. So uh, nearly 70% of you said that you have a plan to assess career readiness skills, which is excellent, which is good. So um, I will be sharing with you uh, a tool to use that. So it's good to know that 30% uh, of you are uh, more on the point of uh, perhaps uh, facing challenge in your assessment of learning outcomes. All right, so um, why do we need to concern ourselves with assessment, right? Because institutions or programs will have intended uh, learning outcomes relative to student behaviors and these workplace readiness competencies, right? Aside from technical knowledge and hard skills, academic programs often set goals for critical thinking, teamwork, or communication. So rather than what the student will know upon graduation, these learning outcomes focus on what type of a person the student will be. 
So we spoke about the NACI competencies, right? And many learning outcomes uh, do reflect those key workplace skills. Now here we have an example of a learning outcomes by academic degree level, uh, bachelor, uh, master's and doctoral. For skills such as critical thinking and communication and uh, teamwork and uh, you know, uh, environment and scholarship and so forth. So let's take a look at the communication uh, learning outcome, right? For the bachelor's uh, programs, uh, we have it saying deliver effective and professional communications using a variety of delivery venues. Uh, for the master's program, the communication learning outcome becomes uh, demonstrate highly developed communication and collaboration skills needed by effective business professionals. So that's what your students will have uh, attained at the end of their master's program. For doctoral student, uh, students, the communications learning outcome becomes present scholarly work via appropriate communication channels. So now then, how can students uh, demonstrate mastery of those outcomes? So to know whether students achieve the learning outcomes, uh, the institution needs to set a target, right? Uh, we need to be able to measure performance in an objective way to demonstrate achievement or to set goals for uh, improvement. This idea follows the plan, do, study, act, a Deming cycle of improvement. And we have talked about it in our previous presentation of assurance of learning and also uh, using the global business education assessment tool for measure, measuring learning outcomes, outcomes and improving the quality of academic programs. So then, um, um, you know, plan the outcome and the target, right? And then you do conduct the assessment. The next is study the results and identify any gaps uh, and then act by making cha changes to the program to improve outcomes in the next round. So let's return to our communication example that I've shared with you uh, a moment ago, right? This MBA program has a learning outcome. Students will demonstrate highly developed communication and collaboration skills needed by effective business professionals. Now that's a worthy outcome, and I'm sure many of you have an outcome very similar to this kind of language, but how can it be assessed, right? Now, here's a target uh, set at 80% um, of graduates will receive a score of 3.5 or better on a 360 degree evaluation uh, related to communication skills. With this target, so we can see that, with this target as a starting place, the program can begin to measure uh, the student's performance. Perhaps the target is too low. Students easily uh, clear the bar. But if the assessment but will show a need for further development to reach that target, then you get to the next stage of the Deming cycle of uh, uh, how to identify uh, the changes that need to be implemented in order to uh, reach your target. So there's a lot of discussion, right? I'm sure at your programs as to what professional skills matter most. So the first step is to identify and articulate your learning outcomes related to professional skills. Some sample learning outcomes might include the following, right? As we talked about it, students uh, communicate clearly, effectively, informatively, and persuasively to diverse audiences. Or uh, another example could be students will develop and promote in others an appreciation for individual diversity of thought and values. Now with these types of learning outcomes, assessment is uh, best achieved through external evaluation rather than relying on the student's perception of themselves, right? Those of you familiar with the Dunning-Kruger effect will know that people tend to overrate their ability in areas they know little about. It is only when they learn the skill that they recognize how much room is there for improvement might be for them in store. So assessing student performance is part of the assurance of learning process but it's how we use the data that really matters. Students can use assessment results to highlight strengths and build professional development plans. Now, program administrators can use um, 
you know, student cohort or programmatic program level results to see where their students are hitting the mark and what areas they can promote and develop in future cohorts. So some of you reported that you do not currently have a way to assess soft skills. It was actually about 30%. So here I want to present a tool uh, Peregrine has developed called Value Skills. And if you've attended our previous uh, webinars, I know I have alluded to it. And in March, I will have a separate presentation that goes deep in detail into what Value Skills, this workplace uh, skills assessment tool is. But I do wanted to give you a little flavor of it again today. So it is a comprehensive, objective, 360-degree uh, based assessment tool that you can use to assess the soft skills of your learners, of your graduates, or of your staff members, faculty members. And you can use the comprehensive results to report, um, uh, they, as they come in the form of reports to help uh, set goals and timelines to improve uh, particular soft skills. Uh, whether they are individual learner soft skills or soft skills that you have defined for your program as a whole, or perhaps even for your uh, team as a whole as well. So, um, you know, we talked about how it is quite challenging, right, to measure something that is so intangible, but also something that comes in for the evaluator with intrinsic biases that each uh, you know, assessor might have. And in the case of uh, value skills, this 360 degree uh, evaluation tool, we actually use um, peer evaluation, self-evaluation, and evaluation by supervisors, by colleagues, by uh, uh, internship facilitators, or any of the uh, supervisors perhaps uh, learners had in their past, current, or, you know, situations, or could be an instructor too. And uh, we have a database of 200 plus soft skills uh, available for you to create a soft skills or professional skills uh, assessment instrument. Now, each soft skill in this database comes with its own corresponding rubrics and behavior descriptions that a person taking the assessment uses to increase their objectivity. And uh, you can see this. Um, you know, in the example of the critical thinking problem solving skills here, and uh, a person would rate uh, the uh, learner or an employer or coworker, or if it's a self evaluation, a student would uh, rate himself or herself as excellent or give a four um, on the Likert scale if they have seen um, them or themselves involving others in brainstorming or that they seek alternative viewpoints to explore possible courses of action. So the rubrics allow you to measure items that usually, as I mentioned, feel intangible. But then each assessment item offers a rubric of statements and sample of behaviors to take that bias, to take that subjectivity out of the assessment instrument. So um, as with all of our offerings, uh, this uh, soft skills assessment tool comes with comprehensive reporting capabilities. And then one of the reports uh, is generated for an individual after their assessment has been completed. And it includes a snapshot of uh, his or her total average score across all of the soft skills and by uh, with an average of all evaluators, right? There's also going to be an average self score given relative to the um, average of the evaluator scores as illustrated here. So in this case, a participant, a student, a learner, or a faculty staff member uh, scored himself or herself as 4.0 when it comes to emotional, emotional intelligence, right? And then the evaluator's average, and we do recommend to select anywhere from two to seven, three to seven evaluators, and the average for the evaluators came out to be 3.8, a little under the self score. However, the group average uh, for that particular student cohort group was a little higher, right, 4.15. So uh, you can have, um, you know, a distribution of uh, scores by the evaluators. And then you can see that uh, there, um, you know, there's some uh, room for improvement uh, in terms of uh, emotional intelligence for this particular participant, especially as it relates to the group average, and also uh, how the evaluators um, rated this particular 
person. Now, nice thing I wanted to highlight is that, uh, let's see if there are any questions. Within this uh, report, uh, students or learners receive uh, what we call an action plan, right? And uh, it is an auto-generated action plan that provides the learners with a tool to set SMART goals. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with the SMART goals. And then uh, it suggests um, that the learner designates someone to hold them accountable to the goals they set. Now, this is beneficial to the student, providing them tools for professional development. But it also benefits uh, program administrators who seek to objectively measure student performance in key workplace skills. And another thing is this also allows the learners to enter timeline for when they want to uh, accomplish these um, uh, activities to improve upon the results. And we say, you know, this is the weakness areas, this is your strength areas. And if you want to improve upon your weakness areas, uh, you know, create an action plan, uh, enter individual activities and tasks you want to complete with the person who will be holding you accountable and then within this time frame. So plans are great, but unless you can uh, um, keep them accountable, they are just going to stay as plans. So as part of the learning process is, of course, uh, the most valuable lesson mo uh, you can uh, gather is from the feedback. And uh, learners can use this action plan to reflect upon their feedback, set goals, and determine how they will build up on these strengths and mitigate weakness areas. And also, um, this kind of assignment helps them, uh, the learners, to kind of become more successful, right, in managing their career, managing their skills. And this is something they can use as part of their uh, job application process. Now, administrators can use these uh, results to demonstrate student achievement and inform academic decision making when it comes to your curriculum and programmatic uh, content areas. So uh, as I have uh, shared with you in my invitation to attend this webinar, we would like to offer a free module for those of you who are attending um, this webinar. And this uh, free uh, leading edge learning modules are available to faculty members. You do need to be a faculty member with an institution. And uh, so I have here two uh, modules. One is uh, Roger Love's uh, Speaking Pro. And Roger Love is a renowned voice coach. Uh, he has worked with, um, you know, you name it, he has worked with all the Hollywood stars and helping them to improve the voice and the diction and the, you know, singing. Uh, feel free to check him out on the website. So we are uh, partnering with him to offer this incredible interactive, really valuable course to you as part of your professional you know, development programs and courses. So feel free to check it out, use it for yourself. If you wanted to offer it to your students, come and talk to me. And then because we are talking about career management, developing career readiness skills, uh, one of our leading edge learning modules is called career readiness. So if you wanted to get free full access to any of these um, modules, please let me know if anything. This is my next uh, poll question to you, the last poll. Um, oh, I don't know if I stop sharing the results, but um, the last poll question I have for you is, uh, so what are your needs? How can we help you, right? And would you like to receive access to the Speaking Pro module by Roger Love? Uh, would you like to have access to the Career Readiness module? And uh, would you all like to schedule a call to discuss further your assessment plans? I'd be more than happy to schedule it for us. But if you wanted to receive uh, more information about um, various solutions we have when it comes to career management, development, assessment, continuous improvement processes, uh, please let me know. And I'd be more than happy to keep you on our list of uh, uh, information as they become available to help you with the various solutions. So I'd like to keep this uh, poll, make sure I give you opportunity to respond. And this is uh, a good time to ask your questions. And um, okay, we are getting a good response. Just wanted to make sure that I capture all of your responses through the poll. Um, here is my email address, uh, jemyansaran at peregrineglobal.com. As I mentioned, I'm based in our Tokyo office. So, um, 
time wise, it works really nicely with um, the schools located in the region because I came from our Washington DC office. So you can imagine there was a quite a time difference and I have worked in this region and really enjoy uh, this region and happy to have um, you know, started working and building connections and relationships with you. So thank you very much. And let me see if, um, I hope I haven't, if we have any questions coming through the chat box. And here, if you need any additional information or clarification, as I mentioned, I am um, video recording and would be happy to share the recording with you. So I'd like to thank you again for uh, spending an hour out of your busy lives to hear about um, what solutions and what challenges, what benefits are there available for managing career readiness and professional skills of your learners, of your graduates.